Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Views on the News. Was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? And the same applies to the carry on drag. Yeah, that's a good So what do you have to say about that, guys? And our panel of the wise and witty today consists of Tercia from South Africa. How the devil are you? Good, good, good. Good. Guy from Manchester. How the devil are you? The devil notwithstanding. Okay. <laughs> Paul from Eastbourne. How the devil Hello are you? Hello there. Good. And David from New York. How the devil are you? Ah, the devil is treating me just fine. Good, good, good. Excellent. So, item number one. In a stunning turn of events, a Pakistani cleric named of Mufti Tariq Mazood, who previously advocated for the immediate execution of those accused of blasphemy, just accused, mind you, not, you know, convicted, but he's now in the Ah, the odious position of being on the run because he's facing accusations of blasphemy himself. <laughs> what a shame. Here's, here's a video about it. And, and several of our videos tonight are courtesy of our friends in Atheist um, Republic. So here we go. In a stunning turn of events, Pakistani cleric Mufti Tariq Masood, once a vocal advocate for immediately executing those accused of blasphemy, now finds himself on the run facing the very accusations he used, he used to condemn others for. Masood sparked outrage across Pakistan with his controversial statements about the Prophet Muhammad in the Quran, claiming that the Prophet was illiterate and relied on scribes to document the holy book. In a particularly inflammatory remark, Masood stated, quote, if the person, Prophet Muhammad, who is presenting the Quran, did not write even a single word of it, and it got written by others, further alleging that this led to grammatical errors in the Quran that remain to this day. The irony of Masood's situation is palpable, given his previous stance that if even if someone had apologized, we cannot say whether it is from the heart or just to show, so he should be punished according to the blasphemy laws. Basically saying that even if if someone is a, commits blasphemy and even if they repent, we should still execute them because we don't know if they're just doing it for show. As Masood attempts to backpedal, claiming that his words were taken out of context, his case highlights the volatile nature of blasphemy accusations in Pakistan and the potential dangers of the very laws he once championed. Mm. <laughs> it's, bad, isn't it? it's reminiscent, isn't it, of, of um, the American pastors condemning uh, gay relations and then being found to, to have them themselves. It's yes. Like, uh, yes. Yes, there's so many that have been called out that way. But um, it, it's it's a funny one because Islamic tradition is that Muhammad was Ill illiterate. Yeah, exactly. Yes. He's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> but that's Allegedly. Like, the truth doesn't yes. even come into it. No, no. But it's it's whether it's popular or not. But gentlemen, you are missing its context. This we are missing <laughs> something. Something is lost in translation because obviously he just stated facts, and um, it seems to have been misunderstood. I think he has enemies. I think there are enemies from within mm -hmm. that are. Um, uh, so yeah, shame. Yes. Poor guy. I, mean, Poor guy. I, I wonder yeah. actually, Tosia, whether the issue is not that uh, Muhammad was illiterate, which is surely part of their tradition but the very suggestion that there are errors in the Quran. Mm. Now, any objective yeah. observer knows uh, that the Quran is yeah. full of errors, um, of, of gr not just grammatical, but scientific and uh, contradictions, all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. um, problem, yeah. Don't you stick your head above it. You're going to offend somebody, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, there is this kind of fetish about the Quran that it's a perfect and it's the word of God. Mm. Which well, you know, is, but you have oh, to. No, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I was just going to say, you know, 
don't let the facts get in the way of <laughs> religion just in general. I mean, that's sort of the core of what generally gets people into trouble yeah. um, uh, when they're accused of the victimless crime of blasphemy in the first mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. So, you know, oh, you mean to tell me you're going to use uh, reason or history or science uh, to uh, mm -hmm. disprove any part um, mm -hmm. of, uh, of my religious doctrine? Well, you evil son of a gun. <laughs> I, think, I think another thing is in Pakistan, the blasphemy laws get used to settle scores, don't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People with a, uh -huh. a grudge against their Christian neighbor can just accuse them of bla blasphemy and ruin their life. Mm -hmm. Possibly end their life. It's an appalling situation. Yeah. It's yeah. like the, the Queen of Hearts calling out off with his head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so, there were a lot of, um, uh, I remember just a few years ago, there was this rash number of um, YouTube bloggers who were hunted down in uh, the Middle East for, you know, they were atheist bloggers. And, you know, in, in the US and in the UK and probably in South Africa as well, you can have these type of conversations and um, not be fearful of uh, any real repercussions. Um, but when you're in places like Pakistan, Iran, mm. even some parts of the United States, um, it has nothing to do with Islam. It has to do with the fervor of religious uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. opinion. Uh, you really sometimes take, we, we forget that you know, people take their lives into their hands just to speak. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Brave people. Yeah. It's not just Pakistan because there's another uh, cleric. This one's in Iran. He's made some outlandish claims about Israel, who, because of their military success recently, including the killing of uh, Hassan Nasrallah, he suspects that they're using woo, supernatural forces. <laughs> Take a look at this. Iranian cleric, Iranian cleric claims Jews use genies for secret missions. In a bizarre twist following Israel's successful operation against Hezbollah leaders, including Hassan Nasrallah, an Iranian cleric has made outlandish claims about Israel's supposed use of supernatural forces. Mustafa Karami, in, in a televised interview, accused Jews in Israel of employing jinn, or spirits from Islamic belief, for covert missions. <laughs> I just had a mental image of like a secret agent Jin, um, <laughs> asserting that, quote, considering the Zionists' history of subjugating genies, they carry out many of their missions through these means, and demons are their secret army. This fantastical claim comes in the wake of Israel's Operation New Order which resulted in the death of Nasrallah and other high-ranking Hezbollah members on September 27th. While various reports suggest different methods of tracking Nasrallah from high-tech gadgets to traditional intelligence work, Karami's supernatural explanation <laughs> stands out for its sheer absurdity. The cleric statements, which also include accusations of Jews using cosmic science and magic throughout history, highlight the extreme narratives being pushed in some quarters, quarters to explain Israel's military successes and underscore the complex web of in misinformation and superstition that can surround geopolitical events in the region. Well, yeah. she's using jinn, spelled D-J-I-N-N. I'm thinking, surely there's a marketing opportunity here for a <laughs> bottle of gin named... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, who, who was it? Was it Arthur Kersler, who, somebody like that, who said um, that, uh, you know, for a, 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 a technologically simple uh, culture, uh, the presence of a really highly sophisticated culture is indistinguishable from magic. <laughs> Yes. And, and maybe something like that's going on here because the 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 Israelis are well advanced on on the uh, yes. technologies around them. Yeah, mm. I don't know. There, there was a case in Thailand several decades ago where a group of military plotters uh, went to a fortune teller to ask them ask for an auspicious date for their coup, and the fortune teller <laughs> promptly went and told, told the government. 
Um, I, I always like the Stevie Wonder line from the song Superstition. You know, when yes. when you believe in things that you don't understand, superstition lends a hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it is sad, though. I mean, it, it is, in fact, the case that uh, um, uh, Muslims I've talked to do believe in jinn. Yeah. They do. Um, and angels. You know, it's, it's all part of the package of believing in God and hell and, have, and paradise, as they call it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they don't drink gin, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> no, and shaitan, of course, is part of that. Yeah. You, yeah. You've lost, you've lost me there. What's that? Satan. They call oh, it shaitan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, moving on to Lebanon now. The uh, the heroes of Hezbollah following news of an israel israeli attack tried to hide in a school which was full of children as is their want you know and the female principal stood bravely against them told them bugger off mm -hmm. that wow that's the first time well, i've heard that, that. Mm. It's despicable, isn't it, that they use human shields, even mm -hmm. children. Because I think there's two, two despicable things going on, aren't there? One is that Hamas and Hezbollah use human shields, and the, the other is that the Israelis just go for them anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Israelis do attempt to um you know warn people to get out of the way but um how effective that is we don't know we don't often get to go to kenya but after a half century the students lecturers and the muslim community at the university of nairobi which is 54 years old now it's uh, the oldest and it's a top ranking university in East Africa, because of course it was 54 years ago that Kenya became independent. So they've managed to resist this push for a mosque for all of that time. But recently, and the reason that they've managed to resist it is because of politics and differences between Sunni and Shia Muslim groups but that changed last year after many letters and discussions when the administration allowed the construction of a temporary mosque on an empty car park in the campus and they're now building a permanent one which should be finished before December. And the Muslim chaplain says it means a lot. This will give that tranquility and calmness needed when communicating with their creator. So what do you think of that? I mean, tranquility and calmness, does that go with our impression of Islam? <laughs> so it's the religion of peace, isn't it? Tranquility, peace, quietness. Yeah, yeah um, but what are we experiencing now? Are mm. we experiencing that? Are the Israelis experiencing that? Well, it's, it's interesting that of the wars going on around the world, most of them are in are, or involve Muslim countries. The only one that doesn't is the Ukraine uh, and Russian war, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Mm. Every other yeah. war or civil, you know, there's there's Muslims involved on one side or the other or both. Mm. Apart from Burma. Burma, there's another one. Yes, well, that's yeah. a, that's a yeah. civil war. Yeah. 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 I, I kind of don't have an opinion about it because I don't know enough. I mean, does the campus have a church? Good question. Yeah, if, it, if it has a church and it has a large number of Muslim students, I don't have a, a feeling really about whether it should have a mosque or not. Well, yeah, I, I, I think, and, and if, if they collected the funds and they, they've paid for it to have, to have put up themselves, I mean, 
if, if we want to encourage freedom from religion, I suppose we have to give people the right to put up their, um, their places of prayer where they want them. And I'll if, remind if you, I'll remind you, you said that later on in this news broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, we have a saying in Afrikaans, um, it's so, so the closest in English is probably the blind justice, but we have a version where I don't know if you know, you guys know what a, sh a shambok is. Um, it's a, yeah. it's a long, it's a, it's a, an instrument of, um, physical, uh, abuse. It was often also used to, um, to when you, when you had an ox wagon to, you know, you, um, a whip, it's like, it's a, like whip, a bull whip. But, it's like a bullwhip, but it's it's more stiff. It's more like a long, stiff um, instrument uh -huh. of torture. It's mm. called a shambok. And uh, we have the saying, it's a blind shambok. The, the, so so that, that cleric who, who is going for the blasphemy laws, um, he, he's being struck by the blind shambok. So you're telling me I should watch out for that blind shambok, John? Yeah, yeah. Later, later. <laughs> so right. the truck... The well, is I'm, I'm coming from a firm atheist position and I'm thinking I don't want to see any buildings of a religious nature being constructed. What I want to do is dissuade people from belief in a non-evidential creator deity and to give up the whole idea of wanting to have a religion. So it's counter to my my mission. Is, is the school public or private? It's public. Yeah, okay. Because in the U.S., um, public institutions, well, they can have, let's say, student organizations run by different different religions, mm. um, as well as atheists and humanists. Mm. Um, uh, private institutions can certainly have a church or a mosque. In public institutions, generally, you'll have a quote-unquote meditation room which can yeah. be used double as a prayer room if people so want to do it. Um, but um, uh, nothing like that, at least at public institutions here in the U.S. Yeah, I was, I was in Kenya back in 1980 mm. uh, when one of my old friends was lecturing at this very university. And... Uh, at the time, they had so recently obtained um, independence that it was still very much in the in the culture of the the, the uh, empire, the British Empire. But they've they've moved on, and now they've had a lot of um, uh, a lot of Muslims arriving and breeding at, you know, the rapid rate that uh, they often do. So, so, there, was so no, John, there, was, there was no need for this, I'm saying, back then. But the, the uh, demography has changed. Uh, not, not because I'm scared of your blind shambok coming to hit me. Well, <laughs> in, <laughs> to well, bite you on the bum is the phrase we would use. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, yeah. So I, well, I agree with your sentiments about uh, it shouldn't happen and I, I would ideally not have it. I, I'm a little bit more pragmatic and I would like to know whether there are churches on that campus. And I, it would be... Maybe I'll do a quick search while we talk, while I'm ducking yeah. for mm. it. Used to be a... if, it uh, if, if there's a church, and, and I, 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 I'm reasonably sure that there probably will be a chapel of sorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it um, was... Or a chaplaincy. I mean, in British universities, there's often a chaplaincy or yeah, more than yeah. one chaplaincy. Yeah. Um, it yeah. was... It was and just, this, this is a problem actually because I think that humanists ought to be putting chaplains in universities. Yes, yes, yes. It's mm -hmm. an absolute priority, but um, I've tried to press this yes. uh, with Humanist UK without success. Yes. This actually, is just, David, it'd be interesting to know if um, the American humanists um, might take that up. You know, yeah, yes, get, yes, get yes. Uh, actually, uh, we do. Uh, and uh, oh, and I've, uh, I'm, I'm an ordained humanist uh, clergy. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I've spoken uh, to uh, many on, on many campuses, um, 
and uh, I, I know is at Harvard, uh, yeah. where the Greg uh, Epstein, you know, they yeah right. Greg Epstein is a humanist chaplain at uh, at Harvard, and he's done a, a fabulous job um, mm. of you know showing that you don't need God to be good. You yeah, know. but we're, we're losing out. In, in every university in in the UK has Muslim chaplains and, and Christian chaplains, and there's very active Muslim societies, usually two or three, um, of different sort of shades and theologies. But well, you know, we de there's, there's often no no humanist group. Yeah, I um, approve of the humanists coming along, but mm -hmm. but creating another faith house is the wrong direction mm -hmm. that's what, what i think okay so on the subject of um what is it the uh tranquility and calmness that um the muslim chaplain thinks that his uh, fellow um members of islam need in uh, in iraq the 15-year-old Ayam Hussein was tried for the Islamic State court for the crime of listening to music during prayer time. And he was convicted and sentenced. And what do you think the punishment was? Oh, God. It's incredible that it was beheading, apparently. That's you absolutely incredible publicly beheaded in front of a cheerful crowd. So there's oh. an example of your tranquility and calmness. So that's the st Islamic State. So wh where are Islamic State in power still? I thought they had been swept away. Yeah, the boy, the boy was from Iraq. I'm not quite sure where this happened, this incident. But there's obviously pockets of Islamic State around that part of the world. Was it, was it a recent incident? Yeah, yes, yes. Cool. I haven't seen for it, but uh, it's certainly been published recently. Poor That's boy. That's terrible. Yeah. Awful. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Uh, the horrible goings on in that part of the world. Let's go to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so, Where the government controls the weather, the Democrats sent hurricanes. <laughs> right. Yes, they, yes. Call, they don't oh. call it gin. No, no. So, as you know, there's an election going on, and one of the candidates, a Democrat candidate, because, of course, this isn't just a general election in America. We have little elections as well on the same day for various state representatives, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Sarah Henry is a Democrat. She's running to defeat an incumbent Republican for a seat in the Florida State House. Um, that would be as a representative. Um, and it's a rematch, apparently. In 2022, they had a contest previously, and she came within a couple of percentage points of winning. So she's trying again, and it's 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 become a bit contentious because she has and you'll you'll be interested in this david she's been politically conscious as a teenager and she went to college and now she's graduated she's worked in the non-profit world serving for a time as a communications associate for the american humanist association yeah and she, in that capacity, she was interviewed on Fox on behalf of the AHA, and she argued that, and you're like this, Tercia, a giant Christian cross honoring veterans would be fine on private property, mm -hmm. but it didn't legally belong on public property. I remember that, yes. So what do you watch think? Fox News, David. Um, 
no. <laughs> the short answer is no. <laughs> uh, if I if I do, I burst into flames or my eyes start bleeding. So I'm not. A... <laughs> but what do you think as a Kreuz Fry person, Tercia? Can you take? Is there anything to learn from this? Well, I'd like to know what the outcome of the election is, whether she will get elected. That, that I would like to know. Maybe maybe that will give me some hope or maybe not. I, of course, I agree 100%. And, and also with, with the, the sentiments and, and cr crosses in public places on, on public land, just it doesn't belong there. And uh, I would like to see crosses uh, kept in churches. Uh, where those who want to can uh, do with them whatever they want to. So, yeah, I, I wish her luck in her endeavours. I really do hope um, uh, that she gets, uh, gets her way on this one. There you go. She's been endorsed by Views yeah. on the News. Yeah, it, it, it is interesting that, uh, that humanists are being targeted now, and I suspect it's um, a mark of... Um, uh, how successful the non-religious cause is becoming in the in the United oh. States. I yeah. hope that's the case. Mm. Yeah, there's a really big uh, political push. There are a lot of people who are, uh, you know, in the past who have been non-believers who uh, were in politics, uh, Congress, the Senate, who never made their, um, you know, they never came out. Um, uh, one in particular was Barney Frank, uh, who you may or may not know, who um, came out gay, um, but was too afraid to come out an atheist, <laughs> which yeah. is a lot about how yeah. the politics of, you know, yeah. the LGBTQ community yeah. um, mm. before um, us. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting is that this case in Florida, you know, Florida for... 50 years was a very blue state and it's only in the last, I think since about 2000 that it first went purple and now it's sort of ruby red mm. um, uh, because it has uh, a history of most people who were living there were you know, transplants from the Northeast mm -hmm. who, when they retired, they moved there and they kept their politics. Um, mm. But those people have slowly passed away and um the um the politics have changed a tremendous amount where it's a very red state now yeah yeah so tercia what do you think you're you're not in favor of a uh, of um a mosque being erected on the university unless it's in response to a, a chapel a, you know church anglican church <laughs> christian church being arrested uh, erected but you you are uh, uh, hang on you are you are in favour of having a mosque on the public uh, premises if it matches the you know the Christian house, but you're not well, in favour of having a cross <laughs> on public. No, premises. no, I, th I think I don't. Firstly, I'm not in favour of. I I'm neutral, and I do think that. Um, University campuses are. It depends. I'd, I'd need the details. I, I really would need the details because if if there was a space and they've um, they've opted to or, or um, requested to have this built, and if there is already a, a church or a chapel or whatever on the premises, and also it depends on where the money came from to build it, then I'm I'm definitely not in favour of. But if the correct procedures were followed, then university campuses should be places of uh, tolerance. And and if they are, a, if there's a large number of students who request that that a mosque should be built, I don't agree with it. And I wish they weren't. I I, I certainly hope that it's sad to me that there are so many students who want it. But I just think one should be a little bit more pragmatic. And and as far as as um, public spaces are concerned i think university campuses are a little bit different and i think it would create a lot of trouble if there's a church or a chapel and there's enough 
Muslim students and you say, no, you can't have a mosque, um, but there's a church or a chapel for the Christians, then I just think that you, you're sending the wrong message in any case. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, you're yeah. favoring... The, the other thing I would say is it's different from the USA. The USA has in its constitution a very strict separation of church and state. I'm not aware that Kenya has the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go, you see. It's it's a bit of a grey issue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I imagine Kenya has something a little bit uh, derived from the UK position we, where we have an established church and, you know, it's a free-for-all, you know, in, in, in universities in that sense. My own university was divided into lots of colleges, each of which had a, had a yeah. chapel. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But not a mosque. <laughs> well, not then, but um, I, I'd be amazed if they don't have one now. Mm. Or several, but. Yep. Ooh, wrong direction, wrong direction. I'm screaming mm. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is something we chatted a bit about before we started recording. But um, the government in this country, the new Labour government in this country, has decided to impose value added tax on private school fees and the, the story is that they would use the money that uh, that raises to provide 6,500 new teachers in the state sector mm -hmm. Des desperately needed let's let's admit it we're really short of teachers we can't retain them teaching has become too horrible a job to attract the right quality of people and to retain them so but there's one school that has already launched a court challenge against, the, it isn't even in force yet, but against the proposed government's imposition of VAT on their fees. And it is the Emmanuel School. Um, and there are other faith schools that also claim the tax would unlawfully discriminate against Christian schools because it could force them to close and the head teacher of this particular Emmanuel school said, the families that we have at Emmanuel are not wealthy they're choosing to send their children here and then sacrifices because of that for some of them an additional 20% on top of what they're currently paying would be too much they wouldn't be able to manage that and then they would have to make decisions about what they were going to do about their children's education. So this legal action, this court challenge is backed by the Christian Legal Center and it also involves two other churches, one, two other schools, private schools. One is called the Branch Christian School in Yorkshire and the, the other is the King's School in Hampshire. So this is getting to be quite contentious. <laughs> That's a nice one. I must say, I, if, if I were the government, um, I would just say, well, if God is on your side, you can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, the thing is that it's not going to be an increase of 20% because you've got to take into account their inputs. Yes. That input. So, yes. so it may, I mean, I don't know whether it'll be 15% or something, but there will, will be a level of uh, fat inputs. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is, I mean, I think, I think the government is entitled to take the view as a matter of um, social policy and in terms of trying to build cohesion in society that, um, they, that they shouldn't be subsidising or encouraging um, private education, which is, which is a, actually divisive. Um, in class terms, or has shown to be, uh, in this country. And, um, you know, I went to a, a public school, as we call them, private school, Catholic private school run by Benedictine monks. Um, but I didn't send my children to such no. institutions. No. Uh, because well, I just don't believe in them. And, uh, well, and they're also emotionally not good to be sent away to a boarding mm -hmm. situation. Yes, well, this I is... At the age of eight. This has been... It, oh, I, yes, boarding situation from eight is horrendous. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And and I speak as a father who sent both of his sons to do that. <laughs> oh dear! But they survived, and they still love me for it. <laughs> well, I mean, I survived, but you know, yeah. I, I don't know what emotional damage 
has done what I would have been like had I not. You know, well, yeah, yeah, we can never oh. we can know the answer to that. Mm. Um, the the thing is that I I would support state education wholeheartedly if it provided a good education for all of the types of children that exist because mm. i didn't go to a fee-paying school myself i went to a grammar school which mm. was elective so it it was pertinent for my level of intellectual uh, ability uh, ambition um and, and my needs were fulfilled but at the moment the state doesn't offer that mm. my my father campaigned for comprehensive education um my older brother won a scholarship to bolton school which is a very prestigious school and my dad refused to send him uh, he said i can't campaign for uh comprehensive education and then um, you know, send my son to a selective school. Yeah. Um, and my dad's argument was everyone's in favor of grammar schools, but nobody's in favor of secondary model schools. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, that was, was the argument. Mm -hmm. Problem. I mean, yeah. I, surely the argument is also that um, if if wealthier parents had to send their children to local schools, they would campaign uh, to, to make sure those schools were better, and they would get involved as active parents to support the school um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so i, th I think the, that... the country which consistently comes top in edu education in europe is finland yeah, yeah which yep. allows private schools but they're not allowed to charge a fee oh interesting yeah um and everybody in finland goes to the local comp yeah yep and yet finland finland yeah. comes on top i think i think pre for precisely the reason that guy says that Families are forced to send their children to the local school. So ambitious parents make sure it's a good school. Yeah. And I, well, I, I can just say, uh, as, a, as a neutral observer from uh, sunny South Africa, we, we <laughs> have our own different, very challenging set of problems in education. Mm. It seems to me from what you've read about the response of these schools, that these are religious Christian private schools. Therefore, the, they, these are not private schools that were started to give quality education only. They were started because they wanted to give a religious education. Yeah. Mm. And and I do, well, that is that is what they themselves say because they say mm. that they mm. are Christian schools and they they being um, persecuted for mm. being religious. So. Mm. Like I said, my sympathy is not with them. Um, I will just tell them to, uh, God is on your side. You should win. Let's see how that one turns out for you. <laughs> well, I'd yeah. like to talk more about this, but maybe another time, because we're running up against the deadline that I, the notional deadline that I have for this show. But so let's take a look at Germany, which interestingly, for a long time, had a three layer education system and it wasn't classist somehow they managed to feel good about all of the layers without feeling disadvantaged because they didn't get to the top one i don't know how they managed that anyway this is about germany take a look at this video. germany to deny citizenship to pro-palestinian social media users now Let's clarify what that means. In a controversial move, Germany has announced a significant significant changes to its citizenship laws, including denying citizenship to individuals who express certain pro-Palestinian statements on social media. This decision is part of broader reforms at making citizenship more accessible to foreign residents, reducing the required residency period from eight to five years. However, the new policy has also tightened restrictions based on Germany's historical responsibility to the Holocaust. The changes specifically target users who like, comment, or post the slogan, From the River to the Sea, which is seen as challenging Israel's right to exist. This policy stems from a clause of Germany's citizenship laws, which concerns, quote, Germany's special historical responsibility for the nationalist socialist injustice and its consequences, especially for the protection of Jewish life. 
The federal ministry of the interior emphasized that context matters, particularly when pro-Palestinian slogans coincide with calls for violence against Israel. To reinforce this stance, Germany has also introduced Holocaust-related questions in citizenship tests. Germany's interior minister, Nancy Pfizer, emphasized the country's position, stating, quote, if you don't share our values, you don't, you can't get a German passport. We have a crystal clear red line here. This decision has sparked intense debate around social media and free expression and the balance between honoring historical responsibilities and the current political tensions and the role of social media in citizenship eligibility. So uh, as a country perpetrated the Holocaust, of course, Germany's a bit sensitive about admitting as to citizenship people who post the slogan, from the river to the sea. Mm -hmm. Quite right, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yes, I'm sympathetic with that, I must say. Mm -hmm. But what does this mean? Can we all start saying we don't want you because you're religiously unal unaligned to our... I think, well, I, no, I, th okay. I think we've, we, we've got to start um, drawing a line um, about, um, you know, those people who are not just unsympathetic with the dominant British value systems, and of course, you have to decide what they are, um, but also actually antagonistic towards them. And and there are Islamists who 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 actually um, you know feel they are in a battle uh, with Western civilization, and, and those kind of people. I don't you know that we should not be giving them citizenship or residence. We should not be allowing them into the country. And when they're here. I, I don't think they should be permitted to stay here. Yes, yes, because they're, they're actually proclaiming that it's their intention to assert their laws, Sharia laws, on yeah. our land, and, exactly. and by the sword if necessary. I, I, I believe Germany still has many laws, anti-Nazi laws, uh, on, on the books to ensure that, you know, that dark period of history doesn't rear its ugly head again. So in the effort, I guess, to make sure their own citizens don't do this, what they're basically saying is anybody who wants to become a citizen has to follow, follow these values um, that we proclaim as, um, as not, uh, as, as, and to stay as far away from anti-Semitism as possible. Yeah, yeah. And in this country, when people seek naturalization, we ask them whether they understand the laws of cricket and worship the king. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We make them take a, a citizenship test. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some, yeah. Some, of, some of the answers of which are, uh, I think are simplistic or possibly even wrong. Well, um, I've, I've attended at least one of those and I couldn't answer some of the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. But um, I mean, the thing is that that citizenship test does not appear to be based on what your values are. It's just um, it's just knowledge, knowledge about British <laughs> life and history. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. And you say the Pledge of, of Allegiance and do you, mm, you yeah. know, who is George Washington? And so yeah, in the old days, um, they, they, you know, when you got British citizenship, you had to go to a solicitor to admin, to swear the oath of allegiance. And yeah. I used to do this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed doing it. Nowadays, you have to explain what you, if you understand what is meant by the expression, I bowled a maiden over. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, only answer I can, the only response I can give is uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And if you don't, if you want to go to Rome, be prepared, if, especially if you want to make use of all the facilities that the Romans then offer you as a citizen, then it's whether I agree with it uh, or not, you 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 have to do as the romans do if you want to go to that country whether it be germany or the uk or wherever if you want to go as an immigrant you should adhere to the or be prepared to um assimilate and uh and adhere to the same values mm, that's, yeah yeah that's, that's, so if you went to if you went to live in kuwait <laughs> Well, yes, if, if, yes, <laughs> if, if, North I Korea, have to, I, have to, 
I have to say yes. Hello, Ruth. <laughs> uh, yes. So I have I, to. I used yes. I used that line when yes. I took when I took a girlfriend to a cave. I said, "When in a cave, do as the cavemen do." <laughs> <laughs> well, and as far as as far as bowling maidens over, surely the the, the key thing is for the maiden to hang on. <laughs> Well, well. I, just, I just have to say, um, I, I, if if I got a job opportunity to go to um, Kuwait, or what did you, Bahrain or wherever, uh, if the offer was good enough, and then I would wear a burqa uh, as long <laughs> if, if it meant I, it, it would uh, I boost they, my they, bank they can, account. They're not um, compulsory, though. Uh, I mean, th th there are large numbers of 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 Europeans in these places. Uh, th this yeah. reminds me yeah. of conversation at a dinner table that uh, is probably apocryphal but that Winston Churchill is supposed to have been sat opposite or next to a very beautiful actress and she proposed to him that they should have sex because what would um, what would our children be like with my beauty in your brains and <laughs> he, he responded well what if they get my Beauty in your brains. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I call, call me cheap, call me cheap or easy or whatever you want to, but uh, I would. There are circumstances where I would, for a couple of years, willingly cover my face and cover my mouth. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the other the other story about Winston Churchill is um, with with another dinner party and sat next to another beautiful actress and she put the same proposition to him and 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 uh, i think the question went um would would you sleep with me for a million pounds and she said yes of course i would yes a million pounds it's a million pounds and then the next question was would you sleep with me for a pound and she said certainly not what do you think i am and he <laughs> he said he said Madam, we've already established what you are. We're just haggling about the price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but talk, talk about price, just for those who, who are interested in the last few minutes. Um, I did a show with Dean Kruger today about South African mega pastor by the name of At Bosov. He's um, hails from Bloemfontein. He was 21 when he started his first church. He began the uh, CRC church that you fellows should keep an eye out. They have branches in the States and in the UK. Yeah. And um, he, his personal wealth, he's the fifth most wealthy pastor in South Africa. And he, his, pers his net worth amounts to 28 million US dollars. So, uh, mm. <laughs> How's that? Well, will he, you know, will he be the, my friend? What is it about? Gay, but religion does. <laughs> what is it about a camel entering, passing through the uh, eye of a needle? Uh, yep. Yeah. 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 Those those they, rules. They do not... cherry pick these people, don't they? Yeah. 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 So here's a piece of news that uh, I know Guy will be pleased to hear, and I'm going to show you a quick video. Very there short. is a big opportunity here. There is an unfairness. There is an injustice. There's so many people of so many faiths and so many people of no faith at all. See the fact that there are 26 bishops. These are not reflective of the United Kingdom and are not reflective of what this country looks like today. Uh, that they are still there. So I will, if the government is not willing to table an amendment, I will table an amendment to remove those 26 bishops from this house. And I hope, as I give way to the honourable gentleman, as to whether he will support me in that mission to make the upper house a fairer and more reflective chamber. That's yeah. so, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. He's talking well, about was the that? form of the House of Lords. Yeah, so, yeah. That, that's, views, yeah, that's by the, the way. Yeah, yeah the, the background. The House the of theory. Lords is, yeah. is, 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 is now almost entirely an appointed chamber. Um, and appointed by the Prime Minister, essentially. And it's really unsatisfactory. It needs to be properly and democratically reformed. And there are 26 bishops that are there ex officio, and mm -hmm. that's part of the established church situation. And, of course, it's, it's a nonsense. And the last time um, there, there was a cru crucial vote on assisted dying, 
um, it was the it was the the the, the, the bishops who swung it against assisted dying. So yes. that's that's the that's the problem. But up to date, the, the thing is that the new government has tabled a bill to reform the Lords by removing the hereditary peers, because I think there's 92 who, yeah. are, who are peers because their father was a Lord just because of birth. And or what, their ancestor was a mistress of somebody, or you know, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, gave some money to the king or something, you know. That's right. But what Sir Gavin Williamson, that was the MP who you saw speaking, wants to do is amend that bill to the effect that it's not just the hereditary peers that we get rid of, but also the bishops. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, th this bill is 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 just a tinkering around the edge. The whole thing needs to be swept away and, pro and replaced with a properly, um, you know, thought through legend but in the house. The problem we have is that they can never agree on what to replace it with. No. Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote to my MP and I said, why don't you just abolish it, dated January the 1st, 2027, and then you've got a year and a half deadline to work out what to replace it with. Yeah, yeah. Galvanize their thoughts, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, get rid of these bishops. At least we'll, we'll get rid of the law, the hereditary peers, good. Be great if we could get rid of the bishops too, good. I, th I think it's- Why not get rid of the whole lot? Yeah. I think it's the other way around. I think it's more important to get rid of the bishops than the hereditaries, because very often they don't have the axes to grind that the bishop. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, finally, you're going to love this. Take a look at this. Trump is the closest thing to God. Trump is the closest thing to Absolutely. God, really? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's what's going to fix this nation. This nation's corrupt. We're all split. America used to be all together. Yeah. Now we're all split up. Why? We need to come back together. The only person who's going to mold us is God first and then Trump. God, then Trump. God, then Trump. Absolutely. But if God's not there, Trump's not going to come out. I'll say that. Kamala comes out, Satan's out, and you better be scared. So so you, you believe that, that Trump is, is picked by God? I believe so. I believe that Trump is blessed by God. I believe that Trump has come from blessed parents. His parents worked for what they had. His parents made him, right. molded him to become the person that he is. But So Trump is selling Bibles for $60. Okay. Is that, he's profiting off of selling Bibles. Bibles. Is that, a, is that a godly thing to do? Is it a godly thing for the Democrats to be okay with killing their babies? Is that okay? I guess that, you they just that you, you answer my question with yeah. another question. Okay. Just answer this question. Is it a godly thing to do for Trump to be? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a business. He's a businessman. That's what this country needs. What do we need? And, well, and if the business is selling that's the Bible, that's okay? That's perfectly fine. What are churches doing? When you go to church, don't they ask you for a dollar? Don't they ask you to do this and that? Churches are businesses. This whole country's a business. Say limited. <laughs> you yes, say limited. Yeah. Well, is, you know this, this. is this is the the rantings of a of a cultist. Yes. Um, because and and you you've seen I think the the a, a confluence of alt right politics, the Republican Party, and the evangelicals uh, and uh, Catholics come together and almost deify Trump. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, these people um, will will vote for him um, because they, they truly believe he has been sent by God. Mm. Um, I mean, it's insane. It is, it is insane. Yeah. Tell me, do, does he do book signings? Uh, does he put his autograph on the Bible? Uh, I think he did at one point. <laughs> but you know, I you got to remember, he's a, I, uh, I think Trump, Trump is a grifter. Trump, Trump is nothing but a grifter. Mm. Uh, he talks about, you know, that woman was talking about, oh, his parents were hardworking. Trump inherited $400 million and went bankrupt seven times. Yeah. He's not a businessman. He's nothing. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And his oh. wonderful father was in the KKK, wasn't he? Yes, his yep. father was a was was that his, 
his um, in the 1970s, uh, the federal government brought a case against the Trump Organization for not renting ha- apartments to uh, Black and Latino people. Yeah. Um, um, in during the the um, Central Park Five, I don't know if you've heard of that in the UK, mm-hmm. where these uh, five um, Black teens were accused and um, thoroughly roughed up by the police to admit to a crime that they didn't commit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trump took out full page ads saying that uh, these uh, these uh, uh, victims themselves um, should be murdered. So, yeah. you know, he's he's just been so wrong on everything. And he is the 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 most um, vile in my lifetime, he's been the most vile president and the most vile yeah. politician. Yeah. Um, he's he's and, the antithesis of what a president yeah. should be. Yeah. However, you know, what you have to think about also, I think in the United States in particular, that, you know, you, you need um, gasoline to build a fire. And so there are people here who think this way, you know, <laughs> And all Trump is is the gasoline for their fears, their hatred, um, mm-hmm. their anxiety. Um, you know the and, and it's um, he's a he's a real uh, danger to not only secular democracy but just d- democracy in general. And it was, it was he who and his government that took away a woman's right to reproductive yes. freedom. Yeah. You know, I mean, I could go on. Yeah, uh, but, um, I, I just want to make the point that he's supported by Elon Musk from South yeah. I'm sorry, people, that we gave you Elon Musk. Uh, sorry. It's not um, your fault, Tercia. Well, you gave us Trump, so we quit. Right, today. exactly. <laughs> are, are you optimistic, David, or pessimistic about the election? Oh, you know, I think it's neck and neck. The, in 2016, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, but didn't win the Electoral College. Yeah. Um, uh, Joe Biden in 2020 won both. Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris, according to all the national uh, polls, is winning. But this election is going to be uh, 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 won by four or five states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, um, because everybody else has chosen a side. It's all these swing voters Mm. in about seven or eight states that are really going to choose the next president. Only about, you know, this is a country of 350 million people. um, And in the end, it's going to come down to about 80,000 undecided voters. Yeah. I, I want. I know we are running over time, but I just you can just answer briefly. Perhaps we can have a discussion about this some other time. But David, I want to ask you whether you have any fear of violence should Donald Trump not win the election. That that there will be disruptions and and um, instability. Do, do you have any? What's what's the feeling on the ground in in the U.S. about that? Uh, well, I think you know. Everyone is sort of hoping that isn't the case, um, but you know we can't deny the fact of history and and history that is not very old. Twenty twenty, did yep. oh, it was only a few years ago. So you know Trump has said, if I win, it's a great election and it, there's no there's no crime or anything that no one no one did anything. If I lose, it's fixed. It's Ooh. stolen. It's stolen, right? So this is this is the mindset, um, and f- for all those people who are going to vote for him, and he'll probably get yeah, eighty yeah. million votes. You know, will a fraction of those people take up arms? Um, yeah. Maybe, and that's the scary thing because up until Trump, in the United States, there was a peaceful transfer of power. That's one of the things. That has been a hallmark. You know, you may not have liked the outcome, um, but you know, when someone takes the oath of office, 
everyone comes together for the republic. Yeah. Um, and Trump was the first president the I think, in in 160 years not to attend um, the swearing in of his um, successor. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't like to end this show on a dark note. So I'm going to remind people that in this part of the world, Trump means fart. <laughs> 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 Thank you guys. Thank you very much. So All right. Good. Well, bye bye. Bye bye. Was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So, what do, you, what do you have to say about that guy?